Hi, I'm Frank Hartland, President of Frank Frederick's Custom Homes, and I'm here today to talk to you about roof construction and roofing materials. Here in Florida, with hurricanes, it's very important to have your roof constructed properly and in accordance with code. In addition, it's important to have the roof covering properly installed to protect you from leaks and to hold the roof down in the event of hurricane force winds. Traditionally, we use southern yellow pine engineered roof trusses. These trusses are designed at an engineering company and built on an off-site company and a factory and then delivered to the job site and craned onto the roof. The attachment from the trusses to the walls on the outside of the home is the responsibility of the builder. Now, at Frank Frederick's Custom Homes, we take the roof truss to exterior wall attachment very seriously. You see, the metal straps that are embedded into the tie beam of the wall are what hold the trusses down in the event of a hurricane. And I have some samples here of some of the straps that are typically used. This is the standard strap that the code requires that builders typically use. It's called a TA-14. Stands for truss anchor 14 inches long. You can see the nail holes in it and there's an embed line right here. There's an L shape that hooks in the concrete. When the top of the wall is filled with concrete and the concrete is still wet, this strap is embedded down into the wall up to the embed line, which is right here. And then when the roof truss gets sit on the wall next to it, this tr strap wraps around the truss and nails onto it. In the event of the wind, of wind against the truss, this strap is designed to hold all your roof trusses down. Now this strap here is only good for about 800 pounds. Now at Frank Frederick's Homes, we don't feel that that's good enough. This is the standard strap that we use at Frank Frederick's Custom Homes. And you can see the difference in the gauge right here and the amount of nail holes in it. This is an HTA20. H meaning heavy gauge, H stands for heavy truss anchor 20 inches long. Now this is good for 1890 pounds of uplift, far more than what your trusses will require. Typical trusses, jack trusses, especially small trusses, are only going to be have a requirement of maybe five to six hundred pounds of uplift. Most builders would then find this as sufficient, and to save money, it's what they use. But at Frank Frederick's Homes, we use HTA 20s as at a minimum, and you can see the gauge of the steel is much, much, much thicker and stronger than the straps that these other builders use. Now I'd like to talk about roof sheathing. The roof sheathing is what nails on top of the trusses. It's basically the foundation for where your roof covering sits on. In the event of a hurricane, typically your roof sheathing is the first thing that gets ripped off of a house. And a lot of builders use a lot of varying different products and at Frank Frederick's Custom Homes, we like to use nothing other than CDX plywood. Now on shingle roofs and on metal roofs, there's not so much load on the roof. So half inch roofs may suffice. But when it comes to tile roofs, the amount of weight that's on that roof, and especially in the event of a hurricane, where wind can get underneath the roof and create vibration, the screws and nails that hold the roof down can work themselves loose, the tile can fly off the roof, and with the amount of weight that's on a tile roof, it's of utmost importance to make sure that your sheathing is thicker than just the standard half inch thickness. At Frank Frederick's Custom Homes, we prefer to use 5 8 sheathing on tile roofs. This is an example of your traditional half inch sheathing. And this is the 5 8 sheathing that we prefer to use on tile roofs. You can clearly see how much thicker it really is. 
This gives you the best protection from your tile roofs coming off in the event of a hurricane. In addition, when it comes to tile roofs, we only use concrete tiles. This is a concrete tile right here. This thing probably weighs about 35 pounds. It's real heavy. And you can see how thick this is and how strong this is. Although a lot of builders promote the use of clay tiles because they have a pretty appearance and each tile has a slightly different shade to it, clay tiles are not sufficient for construction in Florida. And I've seen countless clay tile roofs installed. And after Hurricane Charlie, here in South Gulf Cove, where my model home is located, there were several homes built by a builder, which I will not name, that used the clay tiles, which cost more money than the concrete tiles. And in the event of the storm, after the storm, the tiles were ripped off the roof, became projectiles in the wind, and destroyed the windows and the roofs of houses nearby. The other thing is when you install a tile roof, traditionally the tile is not your water sealing barrier. The real sealant comes underneath the roof in what's called the hot mop. There's a 90 pound granulated felt that's hot tarred and mopped onto the roof before the tiles are even put into place. Now most builders will just go ahead and nail through these holes on the shingle and through and into the hot mop underlayment. Well in our opinion here at Frank Fredericks, the least penetrations that you can put through that hot mop, which is your real water sealing barrier, the better. That's why we go the extra step and use the adhesive foam to attach our tiles onto the hot mop. The first two courses down by the where the uh, eave is have to be screwed down per code but after the first two all the rest of the way are used with adhesive foam. In addition to that these tiles sit and overlap each other. When wind comes in and wants to lift up on the tile when the attachment is only back here there is a risk that the tile can lift up, crack, and come off your roof. By using the adhesive foam, there is an over 80% more resistance to wind flip, wind getting up underneath and ripping off the, the tile off the roof. So all around, you're getting a much better product with the foam. You're getting less screws or nails penetrating through your primary water barrier, and you're also getting a higher resistance to flip and a higher protection against hurricane winds. Now I'd like to talk to you about metal roofs. Metal roofs are very popular here in Florida, especially on the barrier islands, which are subjected to higher hurricane winds. Metal roofs do hold up very well in hurricane force winds. However, metal roofs do have a lot of penetrations that go through the metal roof and into the deck sheathing below. The problem with that is every time you have a penetration, you're risking an area where water can intrude and get into the home. The code requires 30 pound felt paper, which is, I have a sample of it right here. 99% of builders follow the code and they put the felt paper, the 30 pound felt paper down on top of your plywood sheathing and then your metal roof on top of that, screwed down through. Now, although this is code, it's not the best way to do it. It's not how we do it here at Frank Frederick's Custom Homes. We prefer to use a peel and stick, self-sealing system. This is a sample right here of what I'm talking about. And this material has an adhesive back. It comes in rolls about 36 inches wide by about 50 feet in length. You peel the back off and it adheres directly to the plywood underlayment. And it is really, really sticky. And once this is on there, the metal roof goes on top and the penetrations, when they go through this, 
are will self seal around each one of the screw holes. This material is self sealing, protecting each and every penetration in the event of a leak. Now, although it's not the requirement code, it is highly recommended that you go this way in the event of a metal roof.